Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So, little shaft testing uh, video today. Um, one of our suppliers, uh, companies that we have on the wall here at TXG, TPT, uh, put out some interesting research that they had found from their own line a um, couple of weeks ago, I, I'd, I'd read it, uh, and then it was some social media sort of buzz about it through the week, uh, Matty, uh, about torque in shafts mm. and the role torque plays. And um, they were fairly definitive that they thought torque had a role to play. Yep. Uh, and it was specifically about dispersion. Right. And it's potentially opposite of what people would think? I from think a very much the opposite of what people yeah, might like think. common myths. Yeah, yeah. So their test and found that for a right-handed golfer, the dispersion pattern would be more left mm -hmm. on the draw side. Yep. Shot pattern uh, the, with the higher torque would be more to the to the right. Right. Now, if we're calling low torque stiffer and high torque softer, then we would probably say we found instances of of that to be the case. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. You know, we uh, when we were doing the refit of the Big Bertha Alpha driver. When you had the rombacks, um, mm. I had lockdown, the blocks with that, didn't I? You you having a really hard time squaring that one up, and then we put you back into your shaft, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, the ball flight, you know, it's really straightened up. So, um, where this one gets interesting, and, and apologise in advance if you lose some of you, because this will get into some of the nuances of shaft design and shaft specification. But on this particular series of shafts, we are using the same CPM, the same flex. So essentially the stiffness rating measurement is the same. It's exactly the same. So the only variance really that we are seeing was two variances, but the torque variance is there, 0 0.3 uh, of a degree of torque, which is not a whole lot, but it's not massive. Know, we'll, we'll see Something. what it does. Uh, for the purpose of the video, we've actually taken some tape and covered over the, the part where it actually says what the shaft is. Right, so we, we won't, have shaft one and shaft neither two. Neither of us actually will know which neither we're hitting know. right now. So we, we literally juggled the shafts around, switched them out, literally taped them Tape up, up, one and two. We have no idea which is which, so we have no bias towards the result. So we're literally just calling these TPT 15 shaft one and TPT and shaft, shaft two. two. Good, eh? So far feels pretty easy to draw. I hit a couple before we started filming with this. Number one, two. And I actually pretty much hit draws with all of them. Turning them over a little bit. What will be interesting, Matty, with, though, with that is if we see a face-to-path relationship on average that is closed, a strike slightly in the toe, yes. we know that we would expect a draw from that. For sure. If we see that relationship and we, we sort of don't get that flight, that might be a bigger question mark for me because that, that to me, I'm, I'm going, well, that's just, that's just physics. Yeah, that's yeah, just, yeah. That's a path. No way for it not to draw. That's it. That's path on the inside, face close to that, and, and, a, and a toe strike that's causing the ball to gear. Okay. That's a nice one. Better strike, yeah. That's probably less toe side. More centered. Yeah. As we always do when it comes to shafts, we will <clears throat> be trying to figure out here which one allows Matt to deliver the sweet spot to the ball most often. Is that uh, ultimately what would matter the most anyway? If you had, would. say, you used a torque as a variable and someone just started buttoning the middle over and over mm -hmm. again? Your ability to create, or your ability to control the, the face angle left and right, and the loft up and down. Gotcha. That's, that's ultimately what we're trying okay. to achieve with any fit. Okay. Um, I feel like this one squares up pretty quick. Okay. Maybe that's what's happening. So that one felt like a reaction where I tried to almost, I don't know if I tried to heal it or something to make it not curve right. Well, we, we have a pattern, that's for sure. We have a left to right distinct pattern. 
Strike is good. I mean, yeah, you they know, feel, the swings the... feel fine. I, I feel like it's just easy to, to hit a left to right shot. All right, let's switch them, uh, switch them out and see what we see. In terms of the feel, did you feel stiffness? Did you feel, um, you said you felt it square up, so I take it that's, that's feeling some activity in the shaft? Yeah, probably feel activity lower down with that particular shaft. Okay, okay mystery shaft number two. Mm -hmm. um, first one was, was definitely more of a draw pattern than we're used to seeing from you. 50-50 split. Three good ones, three not so good ones on the right hand side. Mm. Um, peak height was lower as a result of the rotation. We lost the ability to really control the, uh, the, the trajectory. Going to see it slightly toe side, toe side, but not exaggerating. So I think there was one heel strike in there that probably helped right. it um, yeah. not be as far toe, but definitely most of them were in the toe. Okay, different, different. It's a good swing there. One of the best ones yet, that one. Funny one? No, no, it may be a little toey. I don't know. It's showing it slightly, but it, it felt more square. Yep. Okay, let's uh, switch them back around. We'll do one more set. No looky looky. No oh, peeking. That's a nice drive. So you're either screwing with me or you did switch them back. Can't tell. Can't tell if you switched them or not. I didn't look. I know you've kept the color the same, but I can't tell if you did that just to mess with my head or if you actually didn't switch them. <laughs> I'm not sure which it is. It's pretty good. Might have mm -hmm. been a might have been a, a couple millimeters toe side maybe. Very good. Yeah, that felt like a good swing. We're throwing a little spanner in the works here, this little second set with shaft one. There's... It's not turning over as much, is it? No. Okay, so looking at the dispersion, Matty, um, Shaft two was, was definitely more down the left consistently. Yes. There was a little spell with shaft one where we got them cooking uh, a little bit. Got them turning over. Could argue that that's the strike point. The argument on the other hand then would be, well, did the shaft cause the strike to, to move? Uh, you, would think, it, you would think so, right? It, it could have. So why don't we, why don't we do a, a reveal on yeah. both ends? You have one and I have one. I have one, yeah. Let's see which one's which. You've got shaft one. Shaft one is the high. Shaft one is high. Okay. So we said that shaft, that the low shaft should draw more, right? Shaft two, basically shaft two on the low should draw more. Oh, we, okay. So yeah. we thought that one would draw more. Yes. So the low and then the high one would, would favor the... Uh, the left side more for you. It, it definitely didn't feel like that no. for me. No, no. So we, we, we didn't see it in that, in that instance. I mean, I definitely tended to take the high shaft one, the high one felt like m 
if I was going to stray, it was going to be a little toe side. Yeah. And so maybe the toe side is what's responsible for a bit of the right pattern no to quite. it. No, quite. It was absolutely. When you see the delivery the way that it was, where the, the face and path are, are where they are, it only can be this. Yeah. It only can be this send in that direction. When you are hitting a, a, a variety of shots, we hit 20, 20 drives there. Yeah. Um, and the face to path discrepancy was, was, was minimal. So is there a player that you can see that would get the expected pattern that they were talking about based on this? Is it just someone with a different strike pattern? I'm basically always toe side of center. I think what I'm kind of concluding, Matteo, in all honesty, is don't base your choice based solely on torque. Right. Don't try to use that as a band-aid. The feels are very different. I mean, if there's one thing I would say, they feel quite a bit different. The, okay. the high torque one does feel quite a bit more flexible to swing. Does it really? Yeah. Because I don't doubt that their robot testing showed the pattern that they advertised. I'm sure yeah. it did. Like the research I'm sure is accurate, but there's no way that it would apply to every single player. You'd still need yeah. to it's finalize that test with this. And then I would have, in my case, got the opposite. Not to say everyone would. Yeah. Probably plenty of people would get exactly what they, sh they saw. Absolutely. Plenty Absolutely. of people would. I think there's, you know, based on the shafts alone, it's, it, it's, I'm not, you know, never fault anyone, but it's my problem when, with marketing mm -hmm. because someone could read that, go out there and buy a product based on what they read to go, oh, that's, yeah. that's good. You know, that, that, low, that low torque one goes a bit more left. I'm struggling with the rights right now and they catch you at a weak moment and then your next thing you've got your credit card out and you're buying one online. Yeah, that's so true. That's <laughs> what happens. So true. That's exactly what happens. You know, you're feeling a little bit chunky and then the next thing P90X comes on and you order <laughs> the full thing. Yeah, and then you do it once and you never see it again. That's exactly. So, yeah, yeah it's just, you just have to be careful, guys. There are so many variables at play here. Trust me when I tell you that isolating one when it comes to torque or weight, isolating one won't do anything for you because there's, there's okay. 10 other ones that play all around it and, and how that player moves that particular club and how they're influenced by that particular feel, those are what shake out in the results. And really you have to be doing your testing with a qualified professional hmm. who can basically tear the data apart and tell you why what's working is working. So, gotcha. That's why, guys, when the Q and A's, if you know, if we, if you say, um, you know, I've got this problem, what shaft's going to help it? We're scratching our head, going it's softly tough. I don't really know. I know. I know. Well, honestly, you don't, right? I, can, I could give you five other things and do them all, and I know I could help you. I cannot guarantee you if we do one of those things, advise one thing when it comes to a shaft or moving a weight. I cannot guarantee that's going to work doing one thing. Yeah. Right, you need, you need multiple things working in your favor. If nothing else, that's a good lesson, I think, from this yeah, anyway. I yeah. think so. Okay. All right, guys. Um, hopefully that's, you know, again, more insight into why you guys need to get fit, why there's more value in club fitting than ever before, because there's so many uh, high quality products. I mean, TPT is, is one of the more premium sort of brands out there, getting tons of tour exposure right now. Lots and lots of guys I'm seeing, you know, in the, uh, the survey every week, so many guys trying TPT, getting them built in the vans. It's a high quality product, it's fantastic. But it in its own is not the solution for every problem that you have, whether it's dispersion or whatever it might be. You just have to go and get fit, layer on the other things on top of it. Then you've got a driver in your hands that's really gonna work for you and be way better than what you've got. So all comes down to that process first and foremost, okay? Hope you enjoyed this, we'll see you again soon.